there's nighttime rituals also, right? So one of my favorite nighttime rituals is after I eat dinner, after I have, you know, some fruit, I brush my teeth right away. And that is a powerful ritual in that it lets me know that I'm done eating for the night and I'm starting to get ready for bed. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that practice and that ritual of, you know, brushing your teeth, flossing, using mouthwash, like those three things, brushing, flossing, using mouthwash, that is a powerful ritual for me because I can't remember a time where I did that. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? Let's have some chips or ice cream. Hello, Adam. You're looking well as ever. How are things on your end? Everything is well. Thank you. I'm uh, I'm excited Good. about my new uh, my, my new microphone here. Yeah, it's nice. It's like right up here, you know, where the important stuff is shared. Indeed. <laughs> it's good. Um, so today I thought we would jump into a topic that I think, you know, um, may feel like we're asking people to tack on chores and tasks to what they're already doing. And straight away, I just want to say that is not what we're doing today. Um, so stick with us, tune in. And the topic is rituals, okay? We're not talking about routines, and we'll tell you why. We're talking about rituals. You know, we live in this world, Adam, where it's like, oh, let me optimize. Let me be hyperproductive. Let me get all these routines in place so I don't have to spend any energy, right? And listen, that's great. This world is moving a mile a second, and we do need that. But I think we've forgotten some of the really wonderful things available to us with rituals. What do you want to impart, you know, before we kind of dive in here to the meat? A few things. Number one, yeah, I think it's a great point to, this isn't, you know, this isn't, oh, more stuff I have to do or more chores I I have to do. Um, And I think that's probably a good fodder for another video of like, what to do when things that you want to do and feel like doing and know you should do start to feel like a chore. But we won't go down that rabbit hole just yet. Um, so this isn't just adding more to, to your to-do list. Um, number two is I think there's so much power in rituals and I'm excited to kind of share how they can be powerful. So let's let's dig into it. So I think one of the first things to do is differentiate rituals from routine because I feel like those words do sometimes get interchangeably used and they are very different. Routine in my mind and from what I've read, right, it's really about automating, right? Automation, um, doing something long enough, repetition, that you don't really have to think about it, you just do it. Like, you know, any of you listening, think of you going through your days. I mean, how many times you actually think, I'm putting on the right blinker to turn right on the street that I go down every day. You don't, it's a routine, you know? Rituals, on the other hand, require presence, (laughs) which is so hard in this day and age. But here's this really cool thing about rituals. Um, They give us a lot. One thing that they do is they mark time. They mark the passage of time. So let's talk big picture rituals, Adam, like holidays, right? So the holiday isn't the ritual, but the things we do on the holiday is a ritual. So like for us, we celebrate Christmas. Great. That's a holiday. Ritual might be, oh, putting up the tree, decorating the house, opening gifts, having a big meal, right? Those are the rituals we go through to signify the holiday, to remind us why we celebrate that holiday. Um, And so that marks the passage of time too, right? Like time is kind of this weird like nebulous thing. Don't sit and try and think about it, Adam. It will make you nuts. I don't know if you've ever done that, but I, don't. Have you? I, I have. <laughs> and I've also thought about the universe and how it never ends. That's... <laughs> I, I, it doesn't compute. Like yeah. that just, you know, we can't go there. No. Maybe they need rituals in space. This is, this is for our next podcast. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so, so uh, go ahead. No, I mean, I think very quickly you made two important, you know, you made an important distinction. Number one is routines make it so we don't have to think, right? And ideally, we want to create some routines with certain things as we're trying to do with our clients is we want to create healthy routines so it almost feels 
effortless, and eventually habitual. Whereas a ritual is actually something that stops time and makes us think and makes us be present. And that's a wonderful mm. thing sometimes. It is. And don't we hear all the time, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time for that. Um, rituals also create time. Adam, you have to share your morning ritual that you've been working on because this in my head blows up anybody's excuse of, I don't have time. Go ahead. Tell us what you've been doing. So listen, I'm, I'm 41 years old. I know balance is very important and it's something that I want to have when I'm older. And you know, for a while I was like, I need to work my balance and I just wasn't working on it. So I created a simple ritual in the morning after I brush my teeth, right before I put my socks on, I put both of my socks on the floor and I time it for one minute each. I stand on my right leg and then I put my sock on and then I stand on my left leg and I put my sock on. So two minutes a day, I'm practicing balance. And it's also a wonderful time for me to just, it's kind of like a mini meditation, right? Meditation is something that I haven't been able to get into. I understand the importance of it. And for me, it's a mini meditation where I could really just focus on the day, think about things, and it just stops time and it's wonderful. And it allows me to practice balance. And instead of feeling, you know, guilty or, you know, I should be doing this, I'm doing it. And I'm doing it in a small enough chunk where it's become a wonderful and uh, enjoy uh, and, and a ritual I enjoy. Yeah. So this is, this is really what we want to encourage our listeners, our viewers to do, right? And this is where that promise that we're not asking you for tack, to, to tack on extra tasks and to-dos every day. You took something as mundane and routine as putting your ding-dang socks on every day. <laughs> and you literally slowed it down and you were like, you know what? Balance is important to me now and for 80, 90 year old me, and I can take two minutes a day and memorialize, ritualize this practice of putting my socks on my feet. I, it's incredible. And I want to point out too, like a ritual makes things very significant, right? Like this is a little daily gift you're giving to your future self, right? Which may sound a little cheesy, but when you get to 80 years old and have impeccable balance, you're going to be like, Rock on, man. Thanks for the gift. Two minutes a day and look at me go. <laughs> like, right. And I think that's what it adds up to is like little bits of significance, little bits of ritual every single day. And you end up with this really powerful outcome down the road. Right. Like if you think about, you know, a ritual I think about a lot is reading to my kids. Mm -hmm. They're kind of getting to ages now where that doesn't happen, at least not with my oldest. My younger one teeters on the edge of it. Um, and I look back at how many nights we have read books to them. So here's something really cool to think about with a ritual. And this, you even talked about when you were sharing about your sock ritual earlier. It's also a transition, right? So think about the ritual of reading your kids a bedtime story. What does it do? Well, it signifies the transition period in a day where it's time to wind down and it's time to prepare for sleep. It eases them into it. It calms them down, right? It's connection. And so even though it's like a 10 or a 15 minute ritual a night, it's really powerful. And then you have years and years of this built into your memory. Totally. And I think we we miss opportunities to do this for ourselves on a daily basis. Totally. And I, I think to your point, though, of rituals, rituals, one of the reasons why I think they're so powerful is they signify the beginning of something, to your point. Mm -hmm. And athletes are very big on rituals, right? And this is why you can be talking with an athlete, you know, an hour before a game and they're all fun and they're loosey goosey and they seem like they don't have a care in the world. And then you see them 10 minutes later and they are so locked in and they are ready to go. And for most of these athletes, it, it's their ritual, right? They start their pregame pre -game ritual and it could start with a meal. It could start with listening to a song, a type of music. It could start with doing a certain type of exercise. Whatever it is, it, it allows them to get into that alter ego state and perform at their best, right? For me, I use rituals with work. So if I have a bunch of work to do, what I'll do is I'll put on some instrumental music, you know, all, it's all instruments, you know, all music, all noise, no, no lyrics. And once it goes on, 
I just, it's like a snap of the fingers, the fingers. I feel focused. I feel ready to go. And that music signifies to me and that ritual helps me get in the state to get into flow of work. Right. By bringing that presence, right? It's not just turning on music and checking out. It's turning on music and checking in. Yes. You draw your focus into the next period of time that you are looking into, that you're moving into. Right. Some things, you know, I want to talk about and give some ideas for people who might be looking for rituals that they could make in their day. Guys, you're already out there doing routines. To be clear, there is time. I tell my clients this, Adam, all the time. I'm like, what are you talking about? There is time. There is time. If we say so, there is time. And there is time to ritualize anything you're doing. I'm going to give you a great example. For those of you who still work out of the house, I realize that may be a fewer number than years ago. Um, You can still do this even if you work from home. But there is a point in time where you're, say, driving home and you pull in the driveway. If you're a parent, you know you're walking into chaos with kids or whatever, your spouse, whatever. Or if you're if you're just part of a couple or even single, right? Like you're transitioning into the next part of your day. So instead of just pulling in the driveway, getting out of your car and walking in the door, take five minutes, take two minutes and sit and transition. Ritualize the moment you turn the car off, right? To help you transition into the next part of your day. What do you think about that, Adam? I love that. I I think it's great. And I think you can use it for those who work at home too. Instead of just walking right out of your office or walking right out of, you know, going from work to family in two seconds or work to spouse, take a few minutes, gather yourself, clean up your desk, whatever it might be, and, you know, try to switch out of that mode. Yeah. And it really does, you know, you say clean up your desk. It really needs to be an action, not just like I'll play a few games on my phone and then go in. No, it's it's like making your bed, right? You get up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you stand and practice your balance, then you put your socks on and then you make your bed. Okay, bed is over. And now I go and I start my day, mm-hmm. right? So it can't just be, let me play a few games on my computer or whatever. There needs to be a significant action taken, right? Like we don't sit and play games on our computer to signify a holiday. Right. No, there's actions we take and they don't have to be big and bold. I think that's a good distinction too, is that a good ritual requires some sort of effort. It's not just looking at your phone and playing games. There is some sort of effort involved. It could be very minimal, but there is a little effort involved. Yeah. Again, it's about presence, right? And there is a time and a place for games. Absolutely. Not knocking it at all. We all need that moment, as you often say, right? Where we just kind of check out, numb out, escape. Totally fine. But I would say rituals are not the place. No. And, you know, there's nighttime rituals also, right? So one of my favorite nighttime rituals is after I eat dinner, after I have, you know, some fruit, I brush my teeth right away. And that is a powerful ritual in that it lets me know that I'm done eating for the night and I'm starting to get ready for bed. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that practice and that ritual of, you know, brushing your teeth, flossing, using mouthwash, like those three things, brushing, flossing, using mouthwash, that is a powerful ritual for me because I can't remember a time where I did that and then I'm like, oh, you know what, let's have some chips or ice cream. (laughs) Yeah. It is. And, you know, we're on the subject of food, and this is more related to a lot of the work we do with our clients. Another ritual that might come ahead of a meal that I think, you know, not not for all, but for many of us has been lost over the years and, and perhaps in the generations and decades. Um, this idea of sanctuary before we eat, right? It might look like prayer around the table at dinner um, or whatever, right? But I encourage clients, I'm like, when you sit, sit down, (laughs) sit down to a meal. Right. And take a moment. Right. Breathe. Right. Come to the table. And yes, if you're into prayer, pray a moment or just throw up a gratitude for something, for the meal, for being able to afford the meal or sit at a table to eat your meal. But take a moment, ritualize that moment just before you eat. Because we work with a lot of people and we're like, hey, 
we got to slow down. We got to start paying attention to what our body is saying, not only before we eat, but while we eat and toward the end of that meal. So having a ritual just before you start your meal can help you stay present and focused during that meal. Totally. And you know, one of the best ways to build a habit is to piggyback it on something that you're already doing, right? And something that we're all doing every day is eating. So you're using the eating as a trigger in a way to be grateful or to say a prayer or whatever you want to do, but you're doing something, you're doing that every day, right? For mm -hmm. some, it could be coffee. It could be whatever it might be. But if you want to build a habit, the easiest way to do it is piggyback it off something you're already doing. On the flip side, you can use that as, or not on the flip, you can use that as a trigger to install a, a potential ritual. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, your sock example is a perfect, a perfect one for that, right? You piggybacked putting your socks on and now I'm ritualizing, practicing my stability work. Right. And meditation. And meditation. It's a two for one. <laughs> Anybody else out there have any two for ones, three for ones? I don't know. What do you get? <laughs> and then, you know, another thing for me is exercise. Like, you know, there are times where I don't feel like it, you know, I'm just not in the mood. Uh, and, you know, I try to think in the future, how will I feel when I get this done? Not how I feel in the moment. And for me, it's, you know, putting my sneakers on. I like to chew gum while I work out. It gets me going and I listen to some music and like, those three things often will just, it just, it gets me closer to that state. Of course, the next state is to actually move a little bit and allow your body to move. And once you do, you start to build a little momentum. But the actions of sneakers on, chewing gum, music, like those three things will definitely get me out of, you know, my comfortable state or whatever it is, like that ritual. It's kind of like, you know, That's so we have a pre-workout ritual. We have a nighttime ritual. There's pre, there's pre-work rituals, right? There's, you know, all sorts of rituals you can install that can be very, very helpful to get you in the mode to do what you really want to do. Yeah, they require presence. And I think that's the biggest thing that we need to understand and apply if we're looking for ways to ritualize some of the things that we do more routinely on a daily basis. It really does require more presence. But guys, it doesn't require more time. You're already spending the time and actually it will give you a sense that time slows down. I call this time bending, right? Like when you are able to embrace presence in a moment of time, it feels like you're bending time, you're creating time. So I, I would just love to hear from anybody listening um, ways in which they might infuse more ritual into their routine. I love that. I feel like time, you know, especially, I don't know, once I had kids, I mean, my oldest is 10. I feel like time is just flying, right? And, you know, one of the things they say that could help slow down time is, you know, and not that this is realistic, but moving, right? Because to your earlier point, typically when we drive in lo locally, we're not paying attention anymore. We know this stop sign, we know this red light, and suddenly we're like, wait, how did I just get here? And you got there because you're just not paying attention. And I think the idea of slowing down time is certainly appealing. And creating rituals is a very effective way to do that because it does, it brings you back to center. It brings you back to being present. Whereas so much of our day is just go, 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 go. I got to get to the next thing. This slows you down. So to me, that, that is the ultimate of just how do we slow down time a little bit and just appreciate where we are and enjoy where we are. Um, and you know, rituals are the easiest and most effective way to do that. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, that's all we have for today. Pretty simple stuff, but pretty deep, pretty powerful. And as I said earlier, we'd love to hear from you. What routines do you have in place now that you might be able to tack on a little ritualization and get some deeper meaning and some time bending out of? As always, Adam loves to hear from you guys. Shoot us an email, leave us comments down below on our YouTube page, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Take good care.